This is Falcon Heavy. It costs $90 million. For a mere $1 billion a year, or about 4% of NASA's budget, we could launch it to every planet and every launch window. And that is before the bulk discount. Now, one may criticize the Falcon Heavy rocket for having a short launch manifest, as it's only had four and five years. There just aren't that many commercial customers right now for the heavy lift rocket when a cheaper Falcon 9 or another medium lift class of booster will suffice. But when one considers the more extreme cases, such as big Department of Defense missions to geostationary orbit or potential human exploration plans, the Falcon Heavy shines. And indeed, even after SLS launched, this monster still proves itself to be an engineering masterpiece shocking NASA scientists. Find out the real reason behind this in today's episode of Alpha Tech. When it was envisioned in 2010, NASA's SLS was tipped to be the world's largest and most powerful rocket in addition to being extraordinarily cheap and quick to build due to ample use of existing components, such as engines and boosters from the space shuttle program. Back then, the Starship was simply a concept, as was Falcon Heavy, the first attempt at heavy orbital vehicles undertaken by SpaceX and roughly comparable in payload capacity to the SLS. Then in 2014, NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden uttered a quote that would go on to be ridiculed and memified ever since. Let's be very honest, we don't have a commercially available heavy lift vehicle. The Falcon 9 Heavy may someday come about, it's on the drawing board right now, but SLS is real. Two years later, in 2016, Bolden said he still did not believe commercial companies were up to the task. If you talk about launch vehicles, we believe our responsibility to the nation is to take care of things that normal people cannot do or don't want to do, like large launch vehicles, Bolden said. I'm not a big fan of commercial investment in large launch vehicles just yet. Ironically, NASA and the SLS Prime contractor Boeing are no longer competing with the Falcon Heavy. SpaceX beat them too, and Falcon Heavy was launched in 2018. Meanwhile, it's not until four years later that SLS can even take off, but keep in mind that launch burned to a total of $23.8 billion in nominal dollars. What a shame. Since that time, a lot has changed. Bolden appears to have changed his mind. In an interview with Politico published in 2020 in the publication Space Newsletter, Bolden was asked what might happen during the next four years. SLS will go away, he said. It could go away during a Biden administration or a next Trump administration, because at some point, commercial entities are going to catch up. They are really going to build a heavy lift launch vehicle sort of like SLS, and they will be able to fly for a much cheaper price than NASA can do SLS. That's just the way it works. Bolden remains a popular and influential voice in the space community, but he no longer has direct say in the U.S. space policy. Perhaps because he no longer has to answer to Congress for NASA budgets, he's also free to speak his mind. In any case, his comments reflect the general sediment in the space community, at least outside of the traditional contractor like Boeing and Northrop Grumman, who directly benefit from SLS development, that the SLS rocket will eventually go away. When Congress conceived of the Space Launch System rocket in 2010 and directed NASA to build it, they were making two bets. First, they bet the new space companies like SpaceX would fail. It was a reasonable bet back then as SpaceX had lost most of the rockets it tried to launch into space. And second, they bet that traditional companies like Boeing would be better at building big rockets. The congressional lawmakers who created SLS, it began with Florida Senator Bill Nelson and Texas Senator Kay Bailey Hutchinson. They were soon joined by Alabama Senator Richard Shelby. Lost both of those bets, so now NASA is building a large expendable rocket that's cost taxpayers tens of billions of dollars. Congress, they remain as committed as ever, both in budget and public statement of support. However, the more that new rockets fly, the more difficult this support will be to maintain. In short, NASA's SLS rocket is probably proof of the saying, don't count your chickens before they hatch. Besides, there's another significant reason why NASA scientists shocked by SpaceX Falcon Heavy launch as it's absurdly low cost. We can directly compare costs between Falcon Heavy and NASA's SLS. And upon direct comparison, the cost disparities are sobering, proving that commercial development of large rockets likely represents the future of the industry. 
Now, to be fair, NASA SLS will have more lift capacity than Falcon Heavy, 70 tons versus 64 tons to low Earth orbit, and a bigger fairing to accommodate flying a wider payload to space, and it'll also have a more capable upper stage that would be able to send larger payloads into deeper space. However, those improvements come at a very, very, very steep price. Consider just a single data point. NASA annually spends about $3 billion to develop the SLS and ground launch systems for the massive rocket at Kennedy Space Center. The SLS rocket was originally supposed to launch in 2017, but the maiden flight slipped all the way to 2022. That's understandable. Most large aerospace rockets experience delays. However, the cost of a three-year delay is about $12 billion, to say the least. And for the sake of argument, consider the cost of this three-year delay against the lift capability NASA could have bought by purchasing Falcon Heavy rockets from SpaceX. That $10 billion equates to 110 launches of the reusable Falcon Heavy, or 67 of the expendable version. This provides up to 3,800 tons of lift the equivalent of 10 international space stations or one heck of a moon base. Obviously, NASA does not need that many launches, but it could buy several Falcon Heavy rockets a year and have the funds to build meaningful payloads to launch on them. In practical terms, NASA has paid nothing for the development of the Falcon Heavy rocket. In fact, by leasing its unused launch complex 39A to SpaceX for Falcon Heavy launches, the space agency said it saves about a million dollars in annual maintenance cost on the historical launch complex. So the question is really, why would the government continue to spend billions of dollars a year of taxpayer money for a rocket that will be unnecessary and obsolete? Lori Garver, a deputy administrator at NASA from 2009 to 2013, shares this. If the U.S. continues this travesty, it will siphon off even more funds NASA could otherwise use for science missions, transfer vehicles, or landers that actually get us somewhere. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section down below. Your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.